namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambu dasa namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambu dasa namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambu dasa <coughs> Thiravara Buddhism Series, Dhamma Talk number 92. The 12th Rain Retreat at Varinja. Buddha left Nalaka village at the end of the 11th rain retreat. And as usual, he talked across the kingdoms to teach Dharma for nine months. When getting close to the 12th rain retreat, maybe a week or two before the full moon, the Buddha arrived and stayed at the foot of a large tree in the Nalarut forest near Varenja. of Vemvayanja kingdom, a different kingdom. Kingdom is Varenja kingdom and the town name is Varinja. Buddha never stayed overnight in the cities or towns where most people are. He always select a place within a walking distance but in a quiet forested place. and stay there. Many people from the area came and paid respect because by then the Buddha was quite well known across the kingdom. After 11-12 years after his enlightenment And in the crowd was a wealthy old Brahmin, Udaya. And this Brahmin closely adhered to the tradition of young people paying respect to the old. That's quite important. <coughs> for him. And already the Brahmin heard about the Buddha, that Buddha never paid respect to anybody, but was always cordial, polite. So, The Brahmin went to the Buddha and talked, standing, showing his disrespect. As he was displeased, the Buddha did not 
give him respect and welcome. And he started attacking the Buddha with a barrage of questions and accusations. The first one was, Gautama, is it true you don't pay respect to the age Brahmins? And the Buddha serenely answered to his questions. I have searched the worlds of human, Dewa and Brahmin, who has better morals, Sila, concentration, Samadhi, and wisdom, binya, than me to pay respect. And found none. In fact, at one time, the Buddha actually scanned the universe for someone that he could pay respect because not paying respect to anybody is not a good tradition in the world of humans. But he couldn't find one. So the Buddha said, that's why I have decided to pay respect to the Dharma. That is the only thing he can pay respect. He teach Dharma respectfully he conduct, deliver Dharma respectfully. He treated Dharma with care and attention. So, the Brahmin step up. Not paying respect to the elderly create discourse. Because when people respect the seniority and age, it gives a certain structure in the society and keeps in harmony. That's what the Brahmin was referring to. Are you someone who does not take pleasure in the following tradition? I try to translate as best I could the closest to the statements or written in the scripture because it carries a heavy weight on how it was posed and how it was answered. Here, the Brahman said, Are you someone? Who does not take pleasure in following tradition? The Buddha replied, I do not take pleasure in things I do not take pleasure in things that I see, hear, smell taste, touch, and think. That was the Buddha's answer. He didn't contradict and come back strong to the accusation. But he make a statement of what he didn't take pleasure in. <clears throat> so the Brahmin accused the Buddha again of not using 
the accepted norm. You don't use the accepted norm. To that the Buddha replied, Yes, I don't utilize the accepted norm only in the sense of not using the sixth sense pleasure with craving. Yeah, because that's not the norm. Everybody, most of the people, enjoy the sense pleasure, the sixth sense pleasure. But the Buddha didn't. Of course, pleasure always come in its own form. But the Buddha didn't use the pleasure with craving. Dana. Then the Brahmin again accused the Buddha as a holder of the view of not respecting and doing without qualifying anything on it. It's understood. It is all about paying respect. But he said, you are the holder of the view of not respecting and doing. To that Buddha replied, Yes, I did not respect or do all that is unwholesome. Akusala. Which produce suffering. In that way, you are right to give me the title. The title is Holder of the View of Not Respecting and Doing. The Buddha always agreed. What the Brahmin said, but under a different context. Next, the Brahmin accused again. You are the destroyer of traditions of the world. Because even before the Buddha, there's uh, thousands of years, Hinduism and Brahmanism is rooted in India. They have a very strong traditions and the culture based on it. So he accused, you are the destroyer of traditions of the world. The Buddha answered, if you refer that I am the destroyer of lust, raga, aversion, dosa, and delusion, Moha. You're right. I have destroyed the mental defilements. Kilesa. <clears throat> because Kilesa are the traditionally what everybody use all the time, every day. And I am the destroyer of it. The Brahmin Udaya accused Buddha again as one who bears disgust in the physical, verbal, and mental actions and behaviors of good families. Because he said, Good family has manners and behaviors and etiquettes, and you have discussed on it. That was the accusation.
Buddha replied, I have discussed in physical, verbal, and mental actions and behaviors that cause suffering. Brahman said, Behaviors and manners of good families. The Buddha answer was, Behaviors and manners that cause suffering. Brahman said that Buddha was the oppressor of the tradition and culture because he's quite skilled with words so he just attacked from different angles using different words for the same not paying respect. The Buddha replied I subdued, abandoned, and erased all mental defilements. I am the oppressor of all unwholesome actions. Yes, I am the oppressor, but do all unwholesome actions. Akusala Kama. And the Brahman accused again of provoking worry and displeasure in the older people. You always provoke and make old people unhappy, displeased and worry. Buddha said, he provoked to eliminate greed, anger, and delusion, which brings dissatisfaction to all. Yes, I provoke and eliminate Loba, Dosa, and Moha because these trees always bring dissatisfaction discontent to everyone. The Brahman didn't give up. Carry on. Due to your behavior, you will not be reborn in higher rebirth. So this one is quite clever because during that time, in India, they have a caste system. Okay. Untouchables, traders and merchants, and the governing class, kings and prince and princess, and the highest is Brahmin, the intellectual class. The Buddha was born in the governing class prince. So, you see, because of your attitude, you will not be reborn in a higher rebirth as a Brahmin. That was his accusation. So, the Buddha cannot come back directly because of the how the world is accepted in a caste system. And the Buddha said, I have abandoned all Dharma that gives rebirth because I have done, abandoned everything craving, grasping. life activities that can produce rebirth. As I have abandoned it, I cannot be reborn 
So in a way, you're right. I wouldn't be reborn in a higher rebirth because I have no more rebirth. The Buddha did not use an aggressive approach and he used the Brahmin's words word by word all the accusation and agree with it so the Brahmin didn't feel that badly but he agrees with it under a different context So, it is a skill of the Buddha how to answer opposing questions, but at the same time, without coming to the result of being harsh, rude, aggressive, and confrontational. These are the things we can learn a lot in our life in dealing with other people as well. Only then the Brahmin resigned. And the Buddha knew even though the Brahmin resigned, he wasn't too happy about it. He lost, but he wasn't too happy. So the Buddha, out of compassion, to quiet down his pain and happiness, explain to the Brahmin. In the following manner, suppose Brahmin, a hen laid many eggs, And the first chicks that came out of by cracking the shell the hens always laid six or ten eggs and she sat on it and sat on it till The first one is the first egg cracked and a little chick came up. And of course, after that, one after the other follows. So the first chick came out by cracking the shell. Would that chick be the oldest of the ones that follow? Will it be the oldest? Of course, the answer is obvious, yes. So that was a little statement for the Brahmin to reflect upon. And the Buddha carry on. Amongst the human, Devas and Brahma, I broke the cover or the shell of ignorance and eradicate rebirth. I'm the first one who cracked that shell of ignorance, the veil of ignorance, and eradicate rebirth. I'm the firstborn. Is there anyone older than me in this world? With that question, the Buddha sued him. Therefore, I am the most senior, the oldest. Then the Brahmin see the light and admitted that Buddha was the eldest and he took refuge in the Buddha. Then he invited the Buddha and monks to spend the rain retreat in Virinja, the town he lives in, the town or a village. 
please spend the rain retreat. I'll take care of the meals for everyone during that three months. The Buddha accepted by staying silent. That year, the 12th rain retreat, the 12th washer of the Buddha, a severe drought hit that region and wiped out all the crops and plants and vegetables. Because in July it's supposed to be start raining, July, August, September, and the crops were harvested in October. But not a drop of rain came. So no more crops, no more plants, no more vegetables, fresh vegetables. People had to ration food left from the last year, last year, last season, and no one could offer alms to the Buddha and the monk because they themselves were struggling. So they totally forgot about them, Buddha and the monk. Even if they remember, they can't do anything, so they stay quiet. I guess. But luckily, a group of horse traders from the north happened to be at Virinja, because there's a lot of these traders going in, horse traders, cow traders, grain traders, traveling across sixteen kingdoms of India, and here, a group of Horse trader from the north, probably from <coughs> now the Punjab. They have a great breeds of horses. They came down for horse trading, and they happened to be there at Varanja at that time. And they too, they don't have much food to spare. But they have quite plenty of grains that they keep for the horses. They feed the horses with a certain type of very inferior grain. They have plenty. So, after seeing the Buddha and the monks plight. They offer the the grains for the horses, for the Buddha and the monks to eat. That was the situation. So some of the monks suggested to the Buddha, "Let's move to another region where we can have some food." That's one. <coughs> Probably most commonly asked question to the Buddha to move to another region, and also the Buddha has his senior disciple with him. <clears throat> Among them was Venerable Moggallana, who was, who has the psychic power, Bhannan, than the Buddha. And Venerable Moggallana volunteered to use his psychic power and extract nutrition or nutritious food or product. Let's call it vitamins. Nowadays, when the astronauts go up there, they have a food, but it's the total extracts of nutrition's something like that i guess for us to understand extract nutritious fruit from the deeper layers of the earth that was one proposal by the mauglana and then also 
he volunteered to shrink the distance of the lands so that by taking just one step the Buddha and the monk can arrive from the South Island to the North Island he said there are four great islands not South East and West South Island is the one where Buddha was born so we don't exactly know where the North Island is except that in the North Island everybody is fair and they are all morally endowed and live in a society of utopian society that's what we know about the North Island Varun Magulana can shrink the distance so that in one step they can step onto the North Island goes for arm round and come back and eat their meals in time that was his offering he offered to the Buddha I can do that Buddha would you be would you allow me to do it for everybody however the Buddha dissuaded all proposals and reminded them to adhere to the rules of staying in one place for a rain retreat okay. if you move around from one place to other for whatever reason because for your convenience and the rule is one must stay in one place then we are all breaking the rule so set stay in one place no we won't move in short what is said was shortcut methods using psychic power would set precedence and send wrong messages if you do psychic power and solve your problem everybody think oh this is okay and they will start using it that means sending wrong messages one must bear difficulties and be a model for the future generations of Buddhists because Vinaya rules and disciplines for the monks is the central post for sasana to prolong and if all adheres according to the Vinaya rules and disciplines Buddha Sasana will prolong a long time after his death, after his passing. Those are the teachings of the Buddha. Not only he taught the monks, he also lived by it. And so the Buddha and the monk stay there for three months eating horse food, horse grain. Maybe they take the grains, nine parts as grain, and maybe about one part maybe put in some flour and grind them and eat it, I guess. And they pass the rain retreat. At the end of the rain retreat, the Buddha was about to leave the place. But it was a custom to bid farewell to the arm sponsor 
at the end of the rain retreat. So if somebody invited <coughs> to stay for a rain retreat and take responsibility of food, you must be polite and courteous to go and say thank you, farewell, goodbye in our modern day words. The Brahmin apologized for lacking his responsibilities due to the food shortage in town and requested to stay one more day, to which the Buddha agreed. The next morning, he offered the Buddha a set of ropes, three, three ropes, a set. To the Buddha and a pair of ropes for the monks because in normally at the end of rain retreat the old ropes were torn so they need a new pair of rope that was the custom As the monks were weak and tired, the Buddha decided to take the shortest route from Virinja to Banaris and then go straight to Vesali because Vesali has plenty of food and prosperous and also there's a the majority of the people are Buddhists and they are willing to give and offer food. So that was the, the 12th rain retreat. And since then, before all the Vinaya rules and discipline Buddhists set out, oh, they listen, they follow, some knows about it, some don't know about it. As you have already heard in the past lectures, some monks don't know about it. But at this time, there was an incident and the Buddha told Venerable Sariputta the purpose or the reason, the cause of the Buddha's sasana to prolong is to upholding the Vinaya rules and discipline. Because of that, that is the year all Buddhist rules and discipline for the monks are kept formal and fully informed to all the monks. Now it's officially documented volume of scriptures for the monks. So may we be able to take lessons from these incidents and story at the time of Buddha, his teachings, and may we follow them to the best of our ability and practice mindfulness insight meditation and attain liberation as soon as possible. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much.